So let's assume you've decided to get your first dog. Now comes the question, which breed to go for? There are so many different kinds of dogs to choose from that finding the perfect breed for you can be a challenge. Now, to better understand what you want in an ideal dog for your level of experience, it can help to see examples of what dog that you don't want. So in today's video, I'm going to give you a few pointers as to which breeds you want to avoid, and I'll explain why. But now, let's get started with my personal pick of the top 10 breeds not suited for first-time owners. Welcome back to the Femrear Canine Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO here at FemreaCanineLeaders.com. And everything we do here on this channel is dedicated to helping you choose the perfect breed for you and then how to become high level canine leaders who can raise perfect canine companions. So if you want to join the amazing community that we have here, start by hitting that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and that way you'll never miss a future video. So then let's dive into today's video and we'll jump straight into the list of top 10 breeds that are not a wise choice for first time owners. And please do not get me wrong, by no means do I want to discourage you from getting a breed that you absolutely adore and would love to live with. You may simply require a bit more education and experience with dogs in general before you go for the breed of your dreams. So then right here at number 10 we have perhaps the most glorious guardian breed in all of Portugal, the Estrella Mountain Dog. Classed as a Mastiff type breed and gifted with an amazingly beautiful long coat in various shades of fawn and grey, these giant dogs are a sight to behold. Therefore it is no surprise that they are rapidly gaining popularity outside of their native country. Praised by European and American breeders as loyal and excellent guardians, the Estrella's level of natural aggression is usually not talked about. However, Portuguese owners, breeders and canine behaviourists concur that Estrella mountain dogs can and will bite should they deem it necessary. Now, most often to protect their territory from intruders, but if corrected too harshly by an uneducated owner, they will, in the words of a Portuguese dog trainer, bite everyone. Now, these bear-like dogs can weigh up to 50 kilograms, which is a solid 110 pounds, and they are known to not forget or forgive unjust corrections, and even less violent treatment. So that said, the Estrella is a legendary natural family, farm, and livestock guardian, and an amazing choice for people who have ex experience with large and independent guardian breeds. Now, at number nine, we have one of my personal favorite dog breeds, the Turkish Kangal. Now, very similar to the Portuguese Estrella Mountain Dog, the Turkish Kangal has been bred as a robust, independent working dog. These giant livestock guardians with their characteristic short sand colored coats can weigh, measure all the way up to kind of 86 centimeters, which is around 34 inches. And like the Estrella, the Kangal's original task was to keep wolves, wild dogs, humans, and other predators away from their flock which again means that these giants come with a natural readiness to attack a perceived threat. And whilst Kangals are far more trainable than Estrellas, they also require a lot more engagement, physical and mental stimulation to become well-balanced companion dogs. These dogs absolutely require an experienced owner, unless perhaps you own livestock yourself and you are planning to put your Kangal to work as a livestock guardian from an early age onwards. In which case, they will take to the task like a duck takes to water, and guarding their flock will provide them the most mental stimulation that they could ever possibly dream of. Now that said, if this is you, you still might want to enlist the assistance of a local canine behaviorist or very skilled trainer. In this way, as your Kangal puppy grows, you will learn how to best communicate with the dog and become its calm, consistent leader. Also, even if your future livestock guardian rarely will encounter humans, you still really should make a huge effort to socialize this type of breed. So at number eight, we have the Belgian Malinois. Now, whilst a dream in the hands of the experienced dog trainer, the Belgian Malinois is an accident waiting to happen in the care of a novice owner. And not so much because the dog could bite somebody, but because Malinois can become amazingly destructive when understimulated. Most certainly, their piercing barks will not endear you to your neighbors either. That is, if you keep them outside especially. Now, should you decide to share your house with a Malinois, ask yourself how much chewing damage you are willing to take, or how often you want to come home to find the contents of your bin 
distributed all over the floor or your sofa shredded to pieces. Now, contrary to the giant livestock guardian breeds we've just discussed, the Malinois is not at all stubborn, independent, or difficult to train. Actually, quite the opposite. They are not even aggressive by nature, even though their popularity as police and military dogs might suggest that they are. The challenge with this dog lies in their extremely high prey drive, which is a straight 10 out of 10. And the same applies for their energy levels. They are through the roof, and I'm really not exaggerating. For these reasons, if you are new to the world of dog ownership, I highly suggest that you're avoiding the Belgian Malinois. And at number seven on our list of the top 10 dogs least suited for novice owners, we have a breed that, no doubt, may surprise a lot of you. And that's the Jack Russell Terrier. Now, very cute in appearance, this little English hunting dog resembles the German Dachshund. Now, not only in size, but also in courage and prey drive. But compared to most other small hunting breeds, the Jack Russell Terrier takes the fox and badger hunter's typical tenacity to completely new levels. These tiny, innocent looking dogs can get very aggressive to the point where they attack strangers and even family members also dog aggression is a known problem in this small breed the fearless terriers will often pick fights with much larger dogs of course for a jack russell to start a fight with say a german shepherd is pretty much a suicide mission now, owners of these fiery little canines need to be aware of these dangers and meticulously work towards shaping their Jack Russell puppy into an obedient canine companion. If they lack the experience to do so, the terrier will try to adopt the leadership position themselves and mercilessly will rule your household. Our number six spot goes to yet another hunting dog, albeit one who does not come with the apparent mean streak of the fierce little Jack Russell Terrier. Now, the large and elegant Galgo Espanol, or Spanish sighthound, bred to hunt and catch rabbits in their native Spain. Now, Galgos are still very much used for their original purpose, and these are serious working dogs and really shouldn't be considered as just house pets. Unfortunately, this fact is often omitted when it comes to rescue organisations in importing galgos to central european countries dogs get paired up with inexperienced owners who are taken by their calm and gentle demeanor and their large soulful eyes but quite often these owners have to return the dogs after a few short weeks due to seriously problematic behaviors for example extreme separation anxiety that leads to the dog wreaking destruction in people's homes when left alone or to even injure themselves when crated in their new owner's absence when kept outside, Galgos habitually escape. Believe it or not, these dogs can climb high fences with frightening ease. And as if all that was not enough, they also come with a prey drive that is off the charts. Being sight towns, they can spot potential prey from a long distance away. Rivaling even the English Greyhound in terms of speed, they are also quite capable of catching and killing what they regard as prey animals. This can even be your neighbours' cats, their chickens or pet rabbits. Therefore, unless you are willing to invest in an expensive, extra secure fence around your property, I would suggest that you beware of this breed. On our number five spot, we have a glorious Italian Mastiff, who I personally count among my favourite breeds, the Connie Corso. Now, once the legendary war dog of Roman armies, the Connie Corso is an extremely capable protector and natural guardian. However, this is definitely not the breed to go for if you've never had a dog before. Every single day, I get messages from Corso owners who lack experience and therefore have run into serious difficulties with their dogs. And by serious, I mean that the dog has become a threat to anyone coming to their house or even worse, a threat to their own children. And again, you'd be shocked about how many of these messages I receive every single day. The only reason why this powerful Mastiff does not rank higher on this list of the top 10 breeds not to go to a new owner is their natural devotion to their own family. Very rarely will a Corso turn its aggression towards a member of the immediate family. However, the dogs we have ranking higher on our list often do not have such qualms. On our number four spot, we have a breed that can be quite wonderful to live with, but if things go wrong, people's lives are at risk. We are speaking about the American Pitbull Terrier. The statistics, unfortunately, name the Pitbull as one of the breeds most responsible for more human deaths caused by dog attacks in the United States. Now, between 2005 and 2019, Pitbulls contributed to 66% of these deaths. 
Combined pit bulls and Rottweilers contributed to 76% of the total recorded deaths. Now, don't get me wrong, pit bulls are loving, devoted, and highly trainable dogs. But when owned by an inexperienced person who fails to properly train and socialize them, they can turn into a serious threat both for humans and other dogs, as pit bulls are extremely prone to dog-to-dog -dog aggression. Now, we must keep in mind that these dogs were bred for war, in other words, for taking on fellow fighting dogs, as well as bulls and even bears. They have an extraordinarily high prey drive. Coupled with their incredible tolerance for pain, this makes an explosive mix, because if something or someone triggers their instincts to chase, bite and tear and not let go, obviously the consequences can be fatal. So here we are at the top three positions on our list of the top 10 dog breeds not really suited for novice owners. And the bronze medal for me has to go to the German guard dog breed that we have just briefly mentioned just now in that discussion with the American Pitbull Terrier, and that was the Rottweiler. Sorry to very quickly interrupt the video guys, I just wanted to let you know if you haven't done it already, over on our website FenrirK9Leaders.com we have a completely free quiz that I designed myself for you to be able to take. It asks you a few questions based on some of the things that I think are really important for what guard dog breed will be perfect for you. So you go through that quiz, you answer the questions honestly and then at the end it will give you what I think the perfect guard dog breed for you is. And again, it's completely free, just trying to help you guys out as much as we can so again there'll be a link down to it in the description box below if you haven't done it already go even if you're not necessarily interested in getting a guard dog breed anytime soon i know a lot of people have found it really fun just to see what kind of breed i would recommend for you so get stuck in go and have a look but without further ado we'll get back to the video you were just watching now, as we saw, the Rottweiler is responsible for the highest number in dog bite related fatalities of the past 15 years in America, second only to the pit bull. Now, it goes without saying that Rottweilers are a breed to stay away from if you have never owned a dog before. Things can and quite often do go very wrong with these dogs. Now, again, don't get me wrong, I personally love Rottweilers and I enjoy working with them, but they absolutely must be led with a firm hand of an experienced owner. And in the case of a powerful Rottweiler, I do not just mean experienced in owning any kind of dog, but specifically in owning large, powerful guardian breeds. Now then, we have arrived at the second position on the pedestal. Let's see who we've got on that prestigious silver medal spot. And the breed that has managed to conquer that second top spot amongst our top 10 breeds, not for first-time owners, is none other than the wonderful, glorious, one-of-a-kind Tibetan Mastiff. Now, these dogs are tenacious, natural guardians and protectors, and they have the physique to match their fearless nature. Tibetan Mastiffs look like lions with thick fur to protect them from harsh climates and from bites whilst battling off predators. These magnificent mountain dogs can weigh up to a stunning 73 kilos, which is around 160 pounds. Whilst excellent protectors and family guardians with a big heart for children, Tibetan Mastiffs are one of the worst choices for novice owners. They are extremely confident, independent and aloof and do not like being told what to do. When challenged, these dogs can react with aggression and attack the person trying to impose corrections on them. It goes without saying that a charging 160 pound plus Mastiff is no joke, but what is no less dangerous is their tendency to make their own decisions when it comes to guarding, if not led by an experienced handler. For example, if someone visits your home and makes a sudden move towards you, this can be easily enough to trigger that extremely keen protective instincts of your Mastiff. And lacking experience, how high do you think your chances would be in being able to physically stop such an attack if that mastiff had misread the situation therefore best not to chance it and for now to make a wide berth of the tibetan mastiff and choose a more suitable dog breed and now then we come to the absolute top spot on our list of canines least suited for newbie owners and the gold medal goes to the most powerful guardian breed on the planet who in terms of fierceness may even surpass the awesome tibetan mastiff we are speaking about the incredible bear-like wolf killer of the caucasian mountains 
called the Caucasian Shepherd. This dog is famous for attacking and annihilating any threat approaching its flock, its territory or its owners. Equipped with a thick double coat, not unlike the Tibetan Mastiffs, the Caucasian Shepherd though can weigh up to 100 kilos, which amounts to around 220 pounds. Originally bred as a flock guardian, the Caucasian Shepherd also has a long history as service dog for the Russian army and as guard dogs for prisoners. These super-sized guardians do not take kindly to strangers or other dogs by nature, and extreme caution is required to keep them in check. Like the Tibetan Mastiff, this is an immensely independent and confident dog and very challenging to train. A Caucasian Shepherd charging another dog, or even worse, another human, is the ultimate worst-case scenario, and some Caucasian Shepherds even attack children in their own household, usually due to inexperienced owners keeping them in an apartment all day together with the family. And such a nightmare can easily occur if the Caucasian Shepherd is not given guidance and direction at all times by a very, very experienced and knowledgeable owner. So I hope you enjoyed that list of the top 10 dog breeds not suited for first time owners and hopefully you found it useful. If you did, please hit that like button. I really appreciate it when you do. And don't forget, if you are new here, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a future one of our videos. And I cannot wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Femria Canine Show.